Hello and welcome back to the official Stephen Delane appreciation channel. Today let's talk about our Lord and Savior, King Stannis Baratheon, and how Game of Thrones decided that Kit Harrington needs a storyline. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to talk about Stannis? Yeah. Then let's talk about Stannis. Alright. So, in Game of Thrones, obviously, they did our boy dirty. How did that happen, George? It's hard to say, because uh, I think... It's not like they don't understand Stannis. I, I feel like they kind of get him, but not on certain important points. Like, when, when you talk about the, the best portrayal of Stannis in the show, it was in the first half of season five. Oh, definitely. Yeah, where he's being reasonable, he's negotiating, he's doing all the other stuff, which which seems to me that at least Brian Cogman or someone else knows like where the ch character could have gone. But then they read uh, A Dance with Dragons and they realize Kid Harrington needs something to do. So, uh, and back then they're going to stretch this thing to season six in an attempt to catch up, uh, to, to sync up with the Winds of Winter if they need to. So uh, they give the Battle of Winterfell to Kid Harrington. That's just what I thought. I don't know if they ever really understood him. To be honest, because whenever he's doing iffy stuff, like let's talk about, let's take the burning of Edric Storm, which was who was merged into Gendry on the show. Um, yeah. If you take that, he's pretty harsh on himself before he actually decides to go do it. He used the leeches and then decided to to go for it before he actually. On the show, Stannis was just fine with it. Like right when when Gendry arrived, he would just took a took a look at him and decided that why not burn him right now? Why uh, make it comfortable for him? And Melisandre yeah. is talking about how she never um, shows the blade before killing him. And... Yeah, although that point, um, he also says, "If you got to do it, just do it. Don't torture the boy." So hmm. you kind of get. You cannot get that idea where he will do sketchy stuff, but he doesn't feel good about it. You know, he, he doesn't like creating pain where there's no necessity, you know? At least that part, they, they kind of got the gist of the character a little bit, even though they're trying very hard to paint him as bad. Because Melisandre is like, ah, I'm gonna, you know, let him have some fun before I uh, burn him. He's like, what are you doing, dude? This, just like, <laughs> don't mess with him. Why are you messing with him? Just like, if you gotta do it, do it. Like, don't torture the boy. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, what I do you mean he's getting laid and then just dying right after? He's like, this is not right, Melisandre. My 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 point was, Stannis. We didn't we didn't get scenes with Stannis struggling to do this these uh, decisions. He just goes for it. He's like. You show him he's already okay with it. He, you show the burning of the of uh, Celise's brother Axel Florent, and he's just standing there looking at him like no treason had ever happened. We, um, we don't get much context right. when it comes to to Stannis on the show, and I think um, yeah, it's yeah, a the, really the, important. The burning, part of him. burning Axel is just like not even consistent, even within like the show itself, you know. Because Salador San doesn't believe in the Red God, and then uh, the Northerners don't, and Davos doesn't really care about that either, and he doesn't do shit to them except for uh, the Florence, which is kind of weird. <laughs> and the whole entire camp of Stannis, only Selyse, Melisandre, and Mephus <laughs> care about the Red God. In the show, Stannis doesn't even threaten to, like, burn the weirwood tree. He's just like, can you please just help me fight Roose Bolton? I'm not <laughs> asking much. It's like, what do you want me to do? Um, yeah, in the books, he's like, he's like, right, uh, you guys, the wildlings take up the Red God or you're deported back to the north. Yeah, it was, like, pretty simple. And I like how the wildlings were pretty down for it, like, the freaking Thans, they love the Red God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of them... They're like, wow, what a what a superior religion. <laughs> this is new. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, most of them were fine. Most of them bent the knee. And we didn't get, get all these scenes. Um, again, context. And you got to come up with off-screen excuses. Like, yeah. just because we didn't see it doesn't mean it doesn't it didn't happen. It's sad. Because you, with Stephen Delane, I joked about it. But he really is an amazing actor. And he was perfect for the role. So why not use him? Why not show yeah. him struggling on screen? He's always, and I get that, Stannis is bitter, and it's funny when the book mentions him clenching his, his teeth. I get it, but he's not just that. He actually has some amazing development from from trying to uh, immediately attack to trying to self save the realm and doing it for the people that he's supposed to rule. We didn't see that yeah. in the television show. He's, he comes across as, as quite ambitious from from yeah from my which i get i i feel like the pre-wall stannis uh talks about duty all the time but i'm like i'm like come on you you just won the iron throne i don't think he had a full understanding of what his responsibility was until he realized the threat was to the north in the beginning he's like it's my duty to be on the throne but really he's like I actually just want to be king, you know. <laughs> and my brother was king, therefore I should be king because Joffrey is a bastard. The the, the Davos is like, what about King Aerys? He's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> when he attacked um, Blackwater and the whole Renly shebang and the whole thing, it's pretty self serving. Like obviously Renly will, will, was trash for defying his brother, but like the, this whole King's Landing saga, Stannis. Was in the books and the show pretty self-serving, you know. Uh, that's just my take. But afterwards, he he um, when he deals with Jon Snow and the Wilding and the whole Northern politics, he he becomes much more flexible. He understands the things he needs to do, even though he's uncomfortable with doing, like freaking you know allowing people religious freedom and you know um, try to play the game. He he tried it with the wildling northerner marriage, but then he has a simple understanding of wildling culture. He's like, okay, you're a king, you're a prince, even though like their lineage is kind of messed up. But he's trying to learn. I like that Stannis is just like always trying to learn. He's really imperfect, and he's kind of messed up. But like he he tries to observe what other people are doing and adapting parts of it, like Jon Snow. Yeah, now it's um, about trying to save the kingdom to win over the people. Yeah, that line always stood out to me. It's uh, it, it describes him perfectly. Yeah, because back then he was uh, even George Martin came out in season four. He he literally did one video on Stannis and be like, before going to the wall, he was trying to uh, win the throne to save the kingdom, and then he's trying to save the kingdom to win the throne, which is like. At least, I guess George R. R. Martin didn't expect season five to go like that when he <laughs> made that video. So yeah, let's let's talk about season five because you mentioned it. Uh, the first half of of season five. Let me circle back. You gotta imagine. I just finished the books. I started them before season four aired and finished the books right before season five came along. And I was hyped. I was so goddamn hyped to see all of the politics and little backstabbing going on in the north and what i found was stannis being abandoned by his whole army um the yeah. whole cell swords all the horses melisandra salise dies within 10 minutes of the very last episode at first yeah. it was also <laughs> him burning shireen because i couldn't see it at that point i can kind of see it now or i can at least um i can at least have a discussion about that but back then I was really furious about that too. But um, to do all of this in, in 10 minutes is so goddamn stupid. I'm sorry. It's uh, it's sad. Because within the show's logic back um, when he decides to burn Shireen, it doesn't even make sense within considering like he's much worse off in the books and he has even less food. And... Um, and he wasn't burning Shireen. And also Shireen wasn't there to begin with. But 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 the the thing that bothers me about the show 
It was like first there is storm crows left right fucking dario's people are working for stannis for some reason oh uh, because the show dario is second sons and not storm crows yeah storm crows in the show works for stannis and first 500 people are gone so like by the time he decides to burn shireen he still has 5500 which is pretty solid and considering the fact that in the end the cell swords took all the horses and left as well as uh two-thirds of like uh baratheon men at arms so it's like he he rolled into the north with like four thousand of his own men according to the iron bank so he ended up with like 1500 or 1200 so like most of the baratheon men left and um and his solution back then was easy he was like barely starving so all he had to do was eat the rest of the horses. He wasn't walking distance anyway. He just eat all the horses, and then he'll have enough like well-fed, just spear dudes. We can. You don't necessarily have to win, but you can put a much better fight. Plus, you have five thousand people. Ramsey rolled out with like two thousand cavalry. You oh you God. can make this last oh, all day. Did. You know, it's like they're not even that bad off to 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 uh to warn the burning of shireen it was like you yeah you are in a frustrating position but it, it's not end or be all you still have a lot of dudes <laughs> yeah he just decided to walk up to winterfell he's like and send out a four yeah, so party like, immediately siege begins at so in the so. end he was capable of walking to the uh, uh, freaking winterfell which means just eat your horses and wait a couple more days you'll be fine yeah. um it just like pisses me off yeah. and also somehow the worst the weather in the entire show was stannis's plot line and not even when white walkers came in yeah <laughs> like freaking jamie lannister was fighting white walkers with a t-shirt on it was so stupid <laughs> yeah oh oh man that's true <laughs> yeah it's so dumb it's like it snowed when jamie lannister decided to go north king's landing had the great Mediterranean weather during the entire final season. Like, the White Walkers didn't even phase them. <laughs> I, I think almost no part of Westeros had to face um, the the long night. You can I, argue that Stannis burning Shireen guaranteed the good weather for the next three seasons. <laughs> yeah, King's Blood. <laughs> King's Blood. King's Blood, bitch. Just yeah. <laughs> no, but the audacity to play heroic music over the Boltons um, charging at Stannis. That scene. Oh, come on. Yeah. And uh, and they didn't even bother to release the heroic Stannis theme when he leaves Castle Black. Oh, right. Yeah, that's my favorite song. It's the one that... Uh, which the one, one I mixed? sent you. Yeah, but the one that gets... Um, it has two Game of Thrones themes in it. Not only the Baratheon one, but another one too. I think. I feel like it's a bit. Yeah, that one. Stuff. I feel. I feel like a Raman Jawadi took the Baratheon theme, and just added a little like Stark violin in the end. It just sounds so much better. Yeah, it was it was amazing. I'm actually hyped for yeah, Raman Jawadi in, in the House of the Dragon. Give us some good music, yeah. man. It's great. Oh man, Stannis. Let's see. Season two, Stannis is like whatever. Not great, not terrible. Season 3, Stannis was freaking trash. Season 4 started with kind of trash Stannis and ended with the pro-gamer move. So that was <laughs> fine. Season 5, Stannis was great until the last two episodes. Yeah, in Season 4, they had him go to, to Bravos <laughs> because they, they didn't know what to do with him. And they, yeah, they had him meet Yeah, I don't even mind it that much. I yeah. didn't even mind it that much. It was like, okay, at least you didn't decide to just cut out the entire Stannis Iron Bank plot, you know? Yeah, but again, it oh, yeah. Por portrays yeah. him as this evil dude, kind of, because he puts pressure on Davos, and then in the end, all of the cells yeah. leave anyway, so... I think the season four, I did watch like a behind-the-scenes or... Is it with Brian Cogman or or with someone else where they explained that 
initially they were gonna like speed up the iron bank plot with stannis anyway so before he attacks winterfell so um the way they were originally gonna just have tycho show up in dragonstone huh but they felt like they just wanted to do that cgi titan shot so they're like who are we gonna <laughs> uh bring to bravos i mean like they were gonna do the Maisie williams thing anyway so you could just do her with a statue just well they decide to they they kind of feel like i th think the logic behind it was it's harder for casuals to understand why iron bank would immediately turn to stannis um even though he was in a bad spot after blackwater and they didn't want to do like a whole two episodes of um cersei dealing with the iron bank and the debt crisis and you know no stimulus check for king's landing for like two episodes <laughs> uh so it's harder to explain why stannis was in a good spot to receive this new loan yeah i guess you're right um because in the end they they brought tycho and Taurus back again so they probably felt the need to actually show him before he's someone in the end i do appreciate that lots of people don't really want to admit it but stannis plot is the only reason game of thrones had an ever-increasing budget because of blackwater blackwater started it all it was it was going to be off screen because back then they were poor and then uh D, &D and others insisted that this be a full on-screen battle. They didn't like Stannis, but Stannis' plotline um, later was still pretty fucking expensive when he taxed the wall. That was like... Jon Snow just got his first big budget episode right before Stannis attacked the wall. So by the time season four ended, uh, Danny had like zero big battle. Jon Snow had one, and Stannis had two. And also, if you think about it, Stannis <laughs> gave Jon Snow the ships to sail to Hardhome in the first place. So Stannis really is the reason for Game of Thrones to go big budget. Because without those ships, yeah. Jon Snow would have, would have still been a Castle Black. So yeah, yeah that's um, a true statement. I mean, Stannis is the reason Jon Snow is alive in the end. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I kind of think about... Because in the book, Stannis marched down to Winterfell because Salador San like took all the ships and left. Right? Yeah. So in the show, if Stannis didn't give the ship to Jon Snow, wouldn't he have just sailed down to White Harbor? Huh. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I mean in both the book and the show, Stannis didn't have his ships, but in the show he had a choice and he chose not to sail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder yeah. what happened to Salador San. Yo, if Stannis if he kept the ships and just told the wildlings to go fuck themselves, he would have been in Winterfell and like very quick. There's so many plot holes the more you think about how Stannis fails in this show. Lots of shit that doesn't make sense. Considering that in the show he was given a better hand when he started Winterfell. It, yeah, because books he had 1,200 people. And in the show he started with 6,000. He was in peak power. Yeah, and then they just walk for winterfell yeah in the books it went from 1200 to like 5500 in the show it went from 6000 to 1200 goes in full circle oh man it do be rough it yeah. do be. and also like um people say in the books he's in an equally bad spot i don't know i feel like stannis's own 1200 is in a pretty bad spot because they're not used to it well, I see the mountain clans. They're being just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like they're, they're like uh, Nikolai Costa Waldo in the show. They're just wearing t-shirts. Yeah, dude, like like Justin Massey and and Godry are like, this is freaking cold. <laughs> and the mountain clans is like, it's not even that bad, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> so the the idea that Stannis's troops are like in the super bad spot in the books. I don't think so. They're fine. Yeah, you're you're right, pretty much. Let's wrap this one up. Thank you guys for watching. 
and see you in part two of the Stennis episode, where we will be discussing Stennis in the Windsor winter.